me call upon Justice Mia Gul Hassan Aurangzeb Saab uh, to talk about our session on present challenges in implementation of effective ADR solutions. Justice Aurangzeb, please. Honorable Chief Justice, ladies and gentlemen, I feel privileged to be to have been given an opportunity to speak at this this August forum. Thank you so much to my first teacher of law, Mr. Farooq Karim Qureshi. The ADR, the journey towards ADR had been long and cumbersome. But we in the Islamabad capital territory want to establish a model where the ADR is implemented in true letter and spirit. ADR has different shades. It exists in the form of arbitration. For that, we've had the law of arbitration since 1940. Mediation, conciliation, and expert evaluation. Mediation and conciliation had been there in the form of Section 89A of the Code of Civil Procedure, which now stands repealed by the Alternative Dispute Resolution Act of 2017. This act provides not just for arbitration, but also mediation, conciliation, and expert evaluation. The reform or the change that we expect and endeavor to bring about in the implementation of this law is through successful mediation. The scheme of the act is such that mediation can be made successful by reference of disputes to what is termed in the act as neutrals. Neutrals are notified by the federal government as such, and they are expected to be trained mediators. Presently, there are many counsel, there are some judges also, that are certified mediators, but they are very small in number. The catalyst of bringing about this change has been the Legal Aid Society based in Karachi and headed by the Honorable Mr. Justice Retired Khilji Arif Hossain. He took a team from Gilgit Baltistan, Islamabad, Karachi, and different other parts of Pakistan to Turkey for us to study their model of mediation. As Mr. Qureshi, mentioned, and so did Judge Charles Brewer, that in Turkey, three million cases have been resolved through mediation. Initially, when I heard this figure in Istanbul, I thought I had misread one of the zeros. But this is a fact. Now, their law of alternative dispute resolution is not of a very ancient vintage. It was enacted in 2012. And it became a success story after much resistance, especially from the legal community. There are now numerous ADR centers all over Turkey. Some are government controlled, and some are private. And they have been the sheet anchor for bringing about a success in reducing the burden from the courts. Our law is of 2017, and it is restricted to the Islamabad capital territory. We were expecting, as the Honorable Chief Justice said, the government, right from the enactment of this law, to give institutional support for this mechanism 
to become successful. But as I said, the catalyst had been a private organization, the Legal Aid Society of Karachi. They now, in collaboration with the Federal Judicial Academy, which is based in Islamabad, and the Legal Aid and Justice Authority, which is also based in Pakistan and headed by a member of the Islamabad Bar, he's a director general. They are in the process of training 100 lawyers as mediators. The training is to be conducted by the Institute of Chartered Arbitrators. So by the month of October this year, we should have 100 certified and trained mediators. Now, as I spoke of the institutional support, the one unique feature in the rules made under the 19, uh, 2017 uh, ADR Act is to give a role to a judge to guide. There is no precedent for that. But this is a very welcome development. The failure of the ADR in different parts of Pakistan, regardless of there being well-established mediation centers funded by foreign donors, has been that this guidance never came from the judiciary. We are thankful to the Federal Judicial Academy for arranging a conference with all the members of the subordinate judiciary to explain to them the existence of this law and the role that they will have to play and the persuasion that they will have to conduct in ensuring that disputes are referred to arbitration, oh, sorry, to mediation. Now, there is a wide spectrum of these lawyers in different fields where they excel in. So these 100 lawyers have experts on the law of taxation, on revenue law, on commercial law, on banking law, on intellectual property law, and so on and so forth. The ADR Act provides that on the first date of hearing, when all the parties tender appearance, the court shall refer the matter to, uh, to mediation. It is mandatory. However, it is subordinated to the consent of the parties. The entire scheme of the Act and the rules made thereunder are consent-based. The parties have to agree. And this persuasion, in referring the matter to mediation, it is the judiciary that has to give the institutional support. What have you got to lose? When the matter is referred to mediation, there is an attempt for there to be a settlement. The mediator, who is well-versed in legal scriptures and are people of integrity, they will try and resolve the dispute. And once the dispute is resolved, it is going to be penned through a settlement agreement, which is duly signed by the parties as well as the mediator. That settlement agreement is brought to the court for life to be infused into it. By that I mean for a judgment and decree to be passed in terms of that settlement so that it is tomorrow made executable. But in case, after the matter is referred to mediation, the parties are unable to resolve their disputes. The mediator is required under the Act to write a report and submit it to the court that had referred the matter to him, which will set out the reasons as to why the mediation failed. It may well point out to the disagreement between the parties, but it may also point out as to the unscrupulous nature of one of the litigants. This report will play a role when the matter goes back to the court and after a full-fledged trial culminates in a judgment and decree 
in determining the costs. Because the judgment and decree will not just include an award for the costs of the case, but will also include the costs of the mediation. The laws that are set out in the schedule to the 2017 Act, the court is not restricted to those laws. The schedule also says that based on the consent of the parties, any other law with respect to which the dispute relates can be referred to mediation. The parties are not bound to request the court to refer the dispute to a neutral who is notified by the government. But the parties may agree on any other person, not necessarily a lawyer, who can act as a mediator. The rules further clarify the position. The rules provide that once a written statement in a, in a suit is filed, the court may frame issues or may not frame issues and refer the matter to mediation. The mediator, by law, is required to complete the process within a period of 30 days. And an extension to him can be granted only for 15 days. Since arbitration is also one of the forms of the ADR, the law requires the arbitration proceedings to be completed within a period of 60 days and an extension to be granted only for a period of 30 days. Unlike the schedule to the Arbitration Act 1940, which expects, which expresses that the arbitration proceedings should be completed in four months. The ADR Act is not just restricted to civil disputes, but criminal cases which are compoundable can also be referred to mediation and conciliation. So the endeavor of the Islamabad High Court in collaboration and in unison with the members of the subordinate judiciary is that when we have these trained mediators in the month of October to persuade the parties, to cause them for the sake of it being a time-saving device and an expense-saving device for the disputes to be referred to mediation. This will also identify to the system those litigants that are unscrupulous and liable to be penalized in the form of costs. Now, as far as the dispute between the individual and the state is concerned, there the executive also has to show flexibility, and we expect them to do that. The enactment of this act would be a futile exercise when we do not see institutional support from the executive in the form of a litigant to make this into a success story. We as judges want our dockets to be reduced so that then we can deliver for you judgments of quality. Quality is compromised when you have little time to deliver judgments. As far as international arbitration is concerned, their agreements at times mandatorily require for there to be mediation. But timelines are very important. Sometimes a request comes and only a period of 30 days is given. When there is an international arbitration between Pakistan and an investor from a foreign state, then that is very dangerous. Because if you do not reconcile your dispute within that period, or ask for an extension, or appoint your arbitrator within that period, you have missed the bus. The secretariat will appoint an arbitral tribunal where you do not have a representative. I recall that Mark Antony once said that the evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. So all the cases that Pakistan has lost in international arbitration 
we all don't stop talking about it. But those that Pakistan has won, we never talk about it. And let me take this opportunity. Now that we heard the pearls of wisdom, I would say, of Judge Charles Brewer, he was one of the arbitrators on the panel of arbitrators in which Pakistan was a party to a dispute and a claim of $70 million was made against Pakistan. Pakistan faced too many problems of its own in defending that claim. We were fighting not just with the opponents, but mostly with our institutions in order to ensure that the case is defended properly. I cannot reveal the names of the parties because that would breach confidentiality. But I'm proud to say that that panel of arbitrators dismissed in total the claim of $70 million against Pakistan and gave Pakistan costs of 10 million pounds. Nobody talks about that. Because there is no secretariat. There is no institutional support. And it's about time that we start that. We don't expect it to happen overnight. Reform, as far as the law of arbitration is concerned, took a very long time. And if I may give you a slight background of the history, arbitration has remained in the form of different systems in the Indian subcontinent, in the panchayat system, in the jirga system. At the advent of the British rule, those systems were not brought to an end, but they were encouraged. The Bengal regulations of 1782 encouraged it. And there was a regulation that provided that an arbitration award will not be set aside unless two witnesses come and depose on oath that the arbitrator was corrupt. The standard was so high. The law of arbitration came in a codified form in our Code of Civil Procedure of 1882. It was in sections 506 to 526. And then came the Arbitration Act of 1899, which went in parallel with the provisions of arbitration in the Code of Civil Procedure. The Act of 1899 applied to the presidency towns of Bombay, Madras, and Calcutta. And it was applicable only for arbitration without the intervention of the court. Whereas the provisions in this Code of Civil Procedure were applicable for arbitration with and without the intervention of the court, as well as arbitrations in a pending suit. In 1904, when Lord Curzon was the Viceroy of India, he appointed Sir Earl Richards as member legal to the Governor General's Council with the mandate to bring reforms in the laws in British India. He revised the Code of Criminal Procedure and in 1907 made a suggestion that the law of arbitration has to be in a codified form. It was too spread out in different statutory instruments. In the 1920s, there was the Civil Justices Committee that was constituted that gave the same recommendation that there has to be a codified law of arbitration. What happened is that the, an amendment was brought in the Code of Civil Procedure in 1908. You will see that Section 89 of the Code of Civil Procedure provided for arbitration in the three different forms. And in order for it to be taken out from the Code of Civil Procedure into an act of parliament, the entire law of arbitration was placed in the schedule to the Code of Civil Procedure, Schedule 2. So if you pick up your books and you see 
that on the enactment of the Arbitration Act of 1940, Section 89 of the Code of Civil Procedure was omitted, and so was the second schedule to the Code of Civil Procedure. And we had the codified form of the Arbitration Act of 1940. I had said it at one of the seminars earlier that the manner in which the Arbitration Act of 1940 is applied and interpreted by the courts. In the case of Guru Nanak Foundation, AIR 1981 Supreme Court, the judges held that the manner in which the Arbitration Act of 1940 is being applied has made the legal philosophers weep and the lawyers laugh. And I would say, perhaps, same is the position today. This remark in a judgment became the precursor in India to bring the Arbitration and Conciliation Act of 1996. It is based on the Ancetral model law. And since its enactment, there have been many amendments in it because there were loopholes. It was not commensurate with it being applied in India. We in Pakistan also have tabled a bill in the National Assembly. The purpose being that there should be standardization of laws. The Ancetral model of law on arbitration has been adopted by many, many countries. And there is no reason why Pakistan should not adopt it. But it remains to be seen whether in future our legislature has the time to delve into this. But for the time being, the onerous responsibility on the judiciary is to interpret the 1940 Act such that the lawyers do not, that the lawyers do not laugh, that the lawyers weep, and the legal philosophers laugh. And the purpose being to make it a time-saving device and an expense-saving device. Arbitration being one of the forms of the ADR can go side by side with mediation. But I am earnestly looking forward to this project of mediation being a success in the Islamabad capital territory, and we all need your, we need your support for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Justice Aurangzeb, for that uh, very uh, enlightening uh, 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 remarks. And, and, and yes, please. Can, can someone get the mic? Over there, please. There. If I can ask you to introduce yourself and be very brief with your question. I can't hear you, sorry, the mic's not on. One second, we're working on the technology. Try now. Hello. Sir, my name is Asif Ali Tamboli, advocate from Islamabad. My question is uh, specifically, specifically from the Honorable Mr. Justice Mia Gul Hassan Aurangzeb Sahib. When a layman asks about ADR, we understand that he is avoiding the lengthy process of courts. But when a judicial officer or a judge of honorable apex courts says and talks about the ADR, I think that uh, it amounts to a, it amounts to a confession that the judicial system is not working properly. That's why we are going to ADR system. I think I can get the relevant answer, my lordship. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. <clears throat> I would uh, beg to disagree with you. The reason for that is that the members of the judiciary 
and the members of the legal fraternity are all in the quest for justice. And justice is speedy and expeditious justice. We as judges can only do what is humanly possible for us. I won't speak of the High Court, but do you not pity a judge of the subordinate judiciary when every morning you see that his cause list is more than 100 cases? Is it humanly possible for him to adjudicate those many cases? This is not just true of Pakistan, but of all the countries in the world. Because had it, had the process of mediation or arbitration or any other alternative dispute resolution mechanism been a mark for the failure of a judicial system, it would not have been a success. We have models before us where the burdens of the courts have been lowered by reason of people, litigants, resorting to this process. And is it not in the benefit of the litigant to see that his dispute is resolved expeditiously? A trial, since Mr. Tamboli, you are an active practitioner, you regularly appear before us. How long does an average suit for declaration or specific performance or injunction take in culminating in a judgment? Does it not take years? Would it not be better for the real stakeholder, the real stakeholder in the system is the litigant, for the dispute to be resolved in a month, the period that this act envisages? So my reply, sir, to you is that in order to make the judicial system a success, we have to all endeavor to make the alternative dispute resolution mechanism into a success. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, one more question, if there is one. OK, if not, let me just end on this note and just uh, to add to uh, Justice Hassan's uh, comments. I, I, I think it's uh, something we forget that ADR actually is part of our culture and part of our norms. And I will share with you uh, a hadith where Prophet Sallallahu said, compromise is permissible amongst Muslims, provided it does not turn the unlawful to lawful and lawful to unlawful. And of course, as we know from many ahadiths, from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged people to come to sol, you know, solah, to, to compromise. And it's also very interesting that the second Khalifa, Hazrat Umar Razila Anha, while issuing directives to the Qazis, he said, return the litigants to effect compromise, for adjudication will bring hatred to the masses. That is such